Okay, round two here. We are on the draw. Um, I'm gonna keep this. We have two of our colors, uh, the Rebel Master, Torch Vein. This guy could be good, could be not, but on turn three, super fine. We have a nice two, three, and combat trick in order to keep the, the Rebel Master going. So we'll try to power through this. Not excited to see Elvish Mystic turn one, because that can get pretty bonkers as it ramps into some bigger things that I can't deal with with a 2-1 and a bunch of 1-1s. One but we'll wait and see how life treats us here. Three drop, what you got? Ooh, the Spada. Not a big deal with our flying guys, since we don't really have that many that matter, but definitely a thing. Um, I think we'll go ahead and play the Marauder here, just in order to be able to like kind of pound through, since it attacks for three versus the Torch Fiend. That makes sense, right? Right. And then we'll play the Rabble Mester next turn. It might be throwing little 1-1s one -ones away. Maybe. But it means they're being blocked instead of something else. Soul Mender, okay. I should have six. Um, and then another three drop. Oh, you're attacking. That's fantastic. Great. Awesome. I'll hang on to my swamp. I don't think I'm worried about discarding here. And we're just going to attack with uh, our 1 1 goblin and the borderland dude. My opponent can double block, have combat tricks, but both of those things are fine uh, to, for my little dorks that I got. And I let my opponent get those cards out of hand. We're drawing live to some good spells here. Uh, one thing I don't know is I wonder if you can use convo uh, uh, Convoke with this. I'm going to give it a try. I don't know if, because uh, of Summoning Sickness, you can actually cast Convoke or not. Um, I want the Mystic to die first, so I'm good with that. And now let's see if I can do this two for one. Yeah, cool. So even though there's Summoning Sickness, it still works. Yay! I know those aren't really powerful spells, but it was a good enough situation for me to kind of see if I can use Convoke on a Summoning Sick dude. And, I mean, it's a two-for-one. My opponent doesn't need to gain life. I don't know if that's synergistic in the deck. And the Elvish Mystic is a good card. Now my opponent's not ramping into a five-drop. That's fine. So my opponent's doing a life gain thing. I'm curious this is a deck. I don't think it is. It's probably more uh, this is a pre-release Swiss game than anything else. We'll see. And that's all my opponent has with one green and then one card in hand. I'm feeling okay. We'll have another goblin next turn. It might get eaten by uh, the Pegasus and my opponent gains a life, but then... I don't know. Still going to attack in with the R dude, which will probably trade with the spider. We're a little bit on the flooded outside. That's okay. I could just go ahead and attack with the Goblin Rabble, whatever, now that it, it becomes a 4-2. My opponent would have to double block or trade off here. Um, otherwise, there's a trade that could happen here. Do I make this happen? No, we're waiting for Blood Ted. Uh, sorry, I'm making sure I wasn't missing my triggers, which I've been doing in the new client since I'm not kind of like intuitively or quickly hitting them. My instinct is to go ahead and attack with a goblin rabble butter butter boy right now. Um, put some pressure on my opponent. But the fact that I can just block or get blocked and trade isn't insane. Um, but otherwise, what? Just both my goblins just get eaten? Am I only do three points of damage? I think I do just want to uh, push through some life. We're a little bit flooded out, but I definitely want to... Uh, make this aggressive hit, make my opponent trade so my opponent has no cards. If my opponent gets rid of the netcaster spell, there's not a whole lot my opponent can do. And we do have a Torch Fiend next. Alright, so my opponent does want to go for the trade. And an eat, and then take four. I'm okay with that. Um, now this guy doesn't have to block anymore. Um, do I show the swamp? There's really no reason to. So my opponent can plow this. I mean, I'm not putting a lot of pressure. My opponent can gain two life a turn. That's not insane. 
Um, I'd be much more worried if my opponent had more cards in hand. We're due for some spells here in the near future, so as long as I don't continue to flood out, life should be A-OK. -okay. My opponent's tapping down for a four drop. What you got? Hunt the week. Ah, oh, bummer. All right. Plus the life gain. Okay. I can still attack with the Torch Fiend. It trades off. It's kind of annoying, but... Again, I mean, I should be able to be... Oh, my opponent's attacking. Which kind of makes sense. Get the two points of life in. I like that attack. I do. Because my opponent wants to trade with the Soul Mender anyway. There we go. A little bit of action for us. Do I attack with... Torch Fiend? I don't know. I mean, it's never going to get through the Soul Mender, and in case a, an artifact comes down, I think I do just want to hang on to it. Uh, that being said, I don't know if I want my opponent to keep gaining a bunch of life. So maybe I do just make the trade. My opponent has no cards in hand. Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to clear up the board. I really feel like I should be drawing into some good gas soon. And I have a follow-up to drop Intimidate. I'm a little bit behind, but hopefully we'll be able to develop the board some. Could be worrisome. My opponent's playing green. Also, presumably, has good draws in the deck. Though the double Soulmender deck. I mm -hmm. wonder what that's all about. So my opponent just took it. So my opponent definitely wants life game for some reason. I wonder what that is. Maybe my opponent overvalues it, but with two Soul Menders, I'm assuming my opponent has something that interacts with gaining life. I just don't know the cards well enough to know what that would be. Hopefully this is not it. Living Toten enters the battlefield. Okay, so this Pegasus is getting kind of big, and it's out of my burn range, and the lifelink is an issue because it's hard for me to race. But luckily my Intimidator will... Oh, so my opponent is playing very conservatively. I'm very happy about that. Oh, now I get the Lightning Strike. Sure. Alright, well, if my opponent doesn't want to attack me, I'll just plink away for two a turn. Could try to get Fancy Pants here, attack with everything. And then lightning strike the Pegasus in like two for all myself, considering these guys are kind of dorky two for ones. But for now, I'll wait it. See if I can get more value out of the lightning strike. Alright, I'm just going to do one a turn, and we're going to grind this game out. Like I said, we have some pretty good draws coming. Don't have the second forest, so if I draw my regenerating ape, that's not awesome, but... Hmm. Uh, I'll just take five. It's a bummer that my opponent's gaining three. That's that's my big worry, but I still want to save this lightning strike for something else. Cool. We have a rough rider for a trade here. I'm going to go attack with everything again. Try to get the Soul Mender off the table, because the life gain is fairly relevant, and the Torch Fiend seems to be irrelevant. Is there any reason to keep the Mountain in my hand? I don't think so. Especially against these colors, there's no discard. So my opponent just wants to gain the life. Take five, okay. Whoa! Boom! Big boy! Alrighty. Not too sure how to get around that guy. Pretty sure it's going to kill me, because even if I get this guy um, dead, 
with like a lightning strike and like a rough rider the the lifelink is going to be an issue so maybe that's what my opponent was doing kind of weird but I'm not too sure So I think what I have to do this next turn is attack with everybody uh, and hope that my opponent uh, eats the Rough Rider with my with the uh, with the tries to go for the Soul hit here. I two for one myself. And I'm still in really rough shape. I think I'm dead. Three, four, five, six. Just barely. If my opponent figures, I'll have one chumper against this guy here. My opponent's probably just like, I don't care. Hit me. Hit me with your best shot. Yeah, that's exactly what my opponent's doing. Getting a life. I'll play my dorky little generator servant, and then I'm basically dead. <laughs> Yeah, so. Well, that didn't work out so well. This is one of the really good souls, too. All right. My opponent's looking to go late as well with some life gain. I could try to get rid of the silverback and try to go more aggressive, but I actually like this. Tyrant's Machine's definitely hanging on. Even though the activated ability is annoying against the soul, it's like my only way to deal with it, right? Um, I guess we do bring in the... Uh, is it the Forge Devil? Yeah, the Forge Devil. Even though the Soul Miners aren't that amazing, it's just there's enough targets to make it worthwhile, it seems. It becomes a two-for-one and something, you know, relatively aggressive. But then maybe there's nothing I want to bring out? Yeah, I mean, I guess the Soul Miners aren't anything that, like, I really care about. And I don't think I want to pull out any of my six drops. I like these guys all against this, uh, the Soul Dudes also. For some reason, I'm feeling like taking the Silver back out. I don't know why, but I think that's one of my, like, ways to deal with the Soul as well. So now we're going to keep it. I still like how the mana base is set. I mean, I don't like the mana base. It's it's scary. But I definitely think it's an appropriate one. I definitely want to play first. Um, this is a keep. It's a fairly aggressive hand. We don't have our other mana, so as we draw our non-red spells, it's a problem. But with two lightning strikes and stuff, and being somewhat aggressive, I think we'll be okay. And that's kind of my game plan here. Just, just go fast. Opponent mulls down a little bit. We're going to get our, our Marauder on right away. Follow up with a Torch Fiend and or Lightning Strike action. Elvish. Oy. Ooh, that's nice. I might just go ahead and uh, Lightning Strike the Elvish Mystic right away so there's not a bunch of ramp, but I'm not too sure about that. Okay. Let's see what happens here. I assume no blocks. There might be a combat trick I'm not aware of. <sighs> Since I need to stay alive, I kind of want to uh, keep my opponent off of a 4-drop right away. Screw it. We're going pressure out. We'll keep him off of a 5-drop. That's the game plan. Soulmender? Okay. I'm still going to bash through the Torch Fiend. We haven't seen artifacts from my opponent. Uh, so being able to uh, just trade off with these guys is fine. My opponent, you know, again, kind of wants to be going late. My opponent at the double block. My opponent double blocks. Am I okay with the the two for one there? Yeah, I think so. I don't think I want to waste my lightning strike on the two for one. My opponent's not even doing a block. 
We'll play the machine here instead of keeping lightning strike up, which isn't entirely awesome, but um, I still think it's worth it because that's basically like getting a removal spell online soon. Nick Kester Spider, sure. Pretty sure we'll just lightning strike that. Yeah, we're gonna lightning strike that and then uh, attack in with our dudes again. Love a land, yay! <laughs> So if I lightning strike, you know, just to like clear the block away, we attack with everything. Yeah, I like it. Otherwise, I could go ahead and just keep Proud's favor up to kill the spider. Yeah, let's do that. Because my opponent might want to play around. Um, the fact that like I'm not using my machine and like might be like, ooh, maybe I just take the five here or something. My opponent can gain life pretty okay. And it gives me the opportunity to uh, play the Kurt Chieftain. Or not. That's fine. We'll use the crowd favor to take out the Netcaster Spider. Looks like my opponent does not want... To... Yeah, I should block with the uh, Summoning Sick Soul Mender, so my opponent can gain a life. That is very true. Likewise, I could just let these trades happen and then play the Kurt Chieftain and I'll be in such a good spot. And yeah, actually, if that's what my opponent's letting me do, I, I would rather do that. Gain a life, go for it. My opponent's just letting this guy stick around. Cool. Because we have, like, great removal spells. I just want to deploy one of my good threats. All right, getting a little worried because now the soul can come down, though. Might have to do a double lightning strike against it. Ooh, and a Phyto Titan. That's the 7 2 that comes untapped? Yeah. So we'll probably just end up tapping that guy down for a while with the Tyrant's Machine, just keep bashing through. I'm very okay with that. Oh, wait. Three, four, five, four. Yeah, it's still six, so it'd still die. So, and we're just gonna keep the pressure up. I'm okay with taking a hit, since we are the aggressor here for sure. Pony just wants to gain life. Are you gonna chump ever? No. Alright, so my opponent can do 10 to me, if my opponent attacks with all of it, but we have lethal on the crack back. I assume my opponent isn't, like, just going to let that happen, but still. We're in an okay shape. My opponent didn't have a second planes, which is nice. The lightning strikes can take care of this guy pretty okay when we need it to. Invasive species. That's a 3 3 with return another permanent you control to its owner's hand. Oh, I misread that earlier. It's not as the centaur courser. And just return another permanent you control to its owner's hand. So bring out the mystic, I assume, just because you can recast it. Opponent has a forest in the mana pool. When when enters the battlefield, return another permanent... Oh, did my opponent just return a forest? That must have been what it was. It's any permanent. Yeah. Got it. Oops, sorry, my turn. All right, tack in with the 4, 4, 3, 4, 5, there's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There's lethal on the crack back, so that is something to care about. But we've got a couple of decent plays here. I can play the Generator Servant. Yeah, so we're going to attack in, probably use Crowd's Favor to save the Curd Chieftain. Um, if my opponent wants to go for that block there, we'll go in and take the Invasive Species away with a Crowd's Favor. 
As long as we just keep enough mana to deal with the phytoplankton for forever, we should be in okay shape. It's not exactly what my opponent wants to happen, but that's okay. Um, I think I care less about the elvish dude. How do I get you to the front? There we go. You just go to the back? I guess that doesn't really work that way. Oh, well, well, that's what I'm doing. That kills the Soul Menders, plus this dude, and leaves an Elvish Mystic, which I could care less about. And then, do I want to play my Generator Servant, or just keep open my Tyrant guy? I think I just leave open, I say tyrant, the tyrant uh, machine. I think that's what we do. Just to keep this guy tapped down. The servant's kind of irrelevant. I mean, it does trade with the Fido thing, and then it comes back tapped, but meh. Show me screen. Oh, that's a bummer. Opponent gets to dig through the deck, find the uh, the soul. Which is one reason why I kind of want to hang on to the lightning strike. But I, I guess I have the, tyrant, the machine, so we're okay. Not the end of the world. A Pegasus. My opponent might try to do another big old block with the curd chieftain. One, two, three, four, five. So it gets big. We're just gonna keep on bashing. Try to press the advantage as much as we can. Trade these? I'll take away the, the flying lifelink dude. Question is, can I get my opponent somehow? If I lightning strike one of them, it's still just one for one action. So again, I'd rather just keep the lightning strike. Um, and kill the lifelinker, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, if, if there was an extra, if there's one less toughness, then I would I would go for it. But instead, this is just fine by me. Oh, wait a second. I get to do this if I want, right? If I do that, my opponent becomes a 4-3. 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, I'm okay with that. My opponent can take 4. Well, really just 3. And then I'll get to keep the a lightning strike up. Or I'll get to keep the tyrants whatever up. Yeah, that's what we're doing. And we're actually just going to go ahead and uh, play the generator servant here. I'll probably just tap down the Fido dude. Another Pegasus. Stop it with your life linking. <laughs> I probably should be doing that after combat, by the way. Wow. So I'm happy. We get to do this and a lightning strike every turn. That's okay. Just gonna keep attacking with the two one. I'm not ramping out into anything. Get a trade off. I don't want my opponent to be able to fly and lifelink a whole bunch. Opponent has to block here's and there's, and I'm pretty sure we can just get it with the lightning strike. My opponent has no cards in hand. Oh, I could have done that anyway. Well, this way my opponent doesn't see all of that, huh? I'm just not gonna bother ordering. I'll let my opponent do whatever the hell they want because there's the four coming through. Or not. So if my opponent goes up to five, my opponent takes two, yeah. So whatever. I'm showing the lightning strike. I'm not going to not let that happen. There we go. What do we see more of? It's still just those soul menders. I did forget about the uh, the elf to maybe where I'd want to play the uh, the forge devil, but I I mean unless like we both draw it on our opening hands, this guy uh, the our, the elf just ends up getting kind of the elvish mystic, just kind of like doesn't end up mattering as much. 
I'm really just worried about that soul. Something I want to pull out. Tyrant's mission I definitely want. The elf does take out a lot of my two ones. No, I just don't think the forge devil is what I want. Especially because I don't want to take anything else out. I don't want to get rid of my threes, which are good against my opponent. So we're going to save it for the third match. All right. Please, no soul of Theros. Might have a fighting chance if that guy doesn't come out. Urgh, this is a little bit of an awkward hand. I think we're going to mulligan this. Yeah. Not even a doubt. This is okay. I'm a, it's like not... No, nah, I only have two swamps in the deck, so I have like two cards without the actual swamp. Plus, without... Yeah. I mean, powerful cards, but I am on the draw. So, I hope it's not that bad going away. Oof. Well, I'm going to keep it, because at least I have my splashes, and I should be able to draw a mountain, but... Ugh. It's hard keeping a fiver like this. And my opponent has an Elvish Mystic. Awesome. Need a mountain off the top, but I only have nine in my deck, so that's crazy. I guess this is okay. Attack me, you elvish mystic! Lightning strike! Alright. My opponent's like, where's your red? I'm really confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kept a shitty hand. I still think, though, instead of going down to four, this is kind of what I need to do. I'm more likely to be able to draw mounds than anything else. And once you start going down to four, you kind of just need to, like, hope that you get something decent. Oh, no. Don't put it on the Sungrace Pegasus. So probably my first mound's going to have to be used just to kill the Pegasus before it gets too big. And I get out of range of anything. I probably shouldn't have F6. Did I have F6? I think I did. I need to show my opponent that I had nothing, though. I'm sure my opponent could guess that I had close to nothing. Man, I really don't want to lose against the double soul mender deck. But I suppose those were my decisions in how I built my deck. And this is me being punished for my aggressive mana base. Which is why some of those moles happened earlier, and also why I'm in the um, predicament I am now with the five land hand that I did keep. Or five land, the five card hand that I did keep. Alrighty. Let's go, my turn. Let's go. Well, I got some power. I just need some red now. How far behind I'll be? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'll be down to 12. I put me up to 24. Mm, I think I have like one turn left to get a mountain out and start taking things down. And it depends how powerful this next spell is. Wall of Mulch. Could care less about you. But an 4 is good against me, so I don't know if that's sideboard or not, but fine. And my opponent has all the time in the world just to like wait until I can get. I don't know what. Wait, waste a blast fire bolt on it? Awesome. Hey, Torch Fiend! Hmm. Super unexciting. Now I think I'm just be too far behind to even come back, but at least the Wall of Mulch doesn't have any power and can't attack, so I didn't get. It's almost like I have an extra draw step to get out of this, but the extra five points is going to be really rough. Because I do think I have to just like take out the Pegasus with a lightning strike first. Because basically we're just looking at one for one a bunch. Yeah, that's going to do it. My opponent's like, yeah, I really don't need a defender right now. I'm so far ahead. Let's just grab some more action. The soul of Theros? No. Ooh, Spectre. Gosh, my opponent's got some good rares. Still, maybe what happened was my opponent like jumped into like white on these pickups like a little bit later. Oh, I should just concede. So sorry. Um... Uh, and that's why my opponent's playing like soul menders and stuff because my opponent wasn't originally in white and just kind of jumped into it later. Not too sure. Uh, or my opponent has a really weird build, but man, Spectre Ward's such a good card. Uh, and of course, the soul is just insane. Oh, 
This is Swiss, so there will be another round. I'll, I'll see you shortly in round three.